Hello everyone. In this video, we learn about auscultation and percussion that is part of cardiopulmonary examination. Auscultation Introduction Auscultation is the art of the listening to sound produced by the body. Auscultation is dependent on the following factors. First one is a functional stethoscope. Second one is a proper technique. Third one is a knowledge of the different categories of the lung sounds, normal, abnormal, adventitious breath and voice sounds. Fourth one is a knowledge of the various categories of the heart sounds and murmurs. Chest sounds, breath sounds, normal breath sounds, abnormal breath sound, adventitious breath sound, extra pulmonary sounds, plural or friction rubs, voice sounds, egophony, bronchophony and whisper pectoriloquy. Technique, environment is another element in the correct performance of the auscultation. The room or cubicle should be as quiet as possible. Television and radio should be turned off and any extraneous noise should be minimized. Clothing should be removed so that it does not interfere in the assess of breath sounds. The patient should be in a sitting position if possible for lung sounds. The anterior, lateral and posterior aspect of the chest should be auscultated both craniocaudally, apex to basis, side to side. The patient is instructed to breathe in out through the mouth. A slightly deeper breath than tidal breathing is suggested. A minimum of one breath per bronchopulmonary segment allow for a comparison of the intensity and pitch quality of the breath sounds. Moving the diaphragm from one side to the other side while simultaneously moving it craniocaudally enables therapist compare the right side of the chest with the left side of the chest. We will start with the breath sounds. We are going to listen with the diaphragm of stethoscope. We are going to start at the apex of the lung and we are going to compare sides and just enter way downward and assess all the lobes of the right and left lungs. Then moving downward with the zigzag pattern. So first, Let's start with the right side. And then we move forward to the left side. Then we are going to move down to the second intercostal space. This is going to help us assess both upper lobes of the both lungs. We are going to go down to the fourth intercostal space. We are going to assess right middle lobe and left upper lobe. Then we go little down and assess the lower lobes. Then we are going to mid clavicular to the sixth intercostal space. We are going to perform auscultation on posterior side of the thorax. Here also zigzag pattern is followed. Normal breath sound. In this video, we will auscultate bronchial breath sound. This will be heard by the bell part of the stethoscope. Bronchial breath sound is heard over trachea. Place the bell part of the stethoscope over trachea and tell the patient to breathe in and out. Bronchial breath sound is loud and high pitched. It is audible in inspiratory and expiratory phase. There is a pause seen between inspiration and expiration. We will auscultate the bronchovesicular breath sound. It is audible over anteriorly at the first intercostal space and second intercostal space.
same procedure is repeated on the opposite side. It is also audible posteriorly between the scapula. It is mixer of bronchial and vesicular breath sound. It is high pitch sound. It is equally heard over inspiratory and expiratory phase. There is no pause between inspiration and expiration. We will auscultate vesicular breath sound. It is audible over peripheral lung tissues. Same procedure is repeated on opposite side. Vesicular sound is soft and low pitched. It is audible in one third of the expiratory phase. There is no pause between inspiration and expiration. Abnormal breath sound. Changes in the sound transmission as a result of an underlying pathologic process. First one is a bronchial breath sound. Second one is a decreased breath sound. Third one is a absent breath sound. Bronchial breath sound. Bronchial sounds occur in a peripheral lung when it becomes airless either partially or completely. In a consolidating type of pneumonia, the lung tissue is airless because of the complete obstruction of segmental or lobar bronchi by secretions. Sounds become high pitched and the expiratory component is louder and more pronounced. For example, consolidating type of pneumonia, secondary pleural effusion and tumor. Decreased or absent breath sound. It occurs when sound transmission is diminished or abolished. Decreased breath sounds occur when the normal vesicular sounds are further diminished. The term absent sounds means that no sounds are audible. Decreased or absent sounds can be caused by an internal pulmonary pathology or can be secondary to a, a initially non-pulmonary condition. For example, emphysema. Extrapulmonary causes, tumors, muscular dystrophy, musculoskeletal deformities. Pain is a common cause for decreased or absent breath sounds. For example, incisional, mid-sternotomy, traumatic, fractured drips. If no underlying pathologies are absent, present, decreased breath sounds may be a reflection of the depth of the respiration. For example, thickness of the chest wall. Adventitious breath sounds. They are the extraneous noises produced over the bronchopulmonary tree and are an indication of an abnormal process or condition. Crackles. It is discontinuous. It is low pitched sound. They occur predominantly during inspiration. The sound of rubbing hair between the fingers or velcro popping. It indicates a peripheral airway process. Tonchai. It is continuous. It is low pitched sound and occur both during inspiration and expiration. Snoring is a term used to describe its quality, attributed to an obstructive process in the larger more central airways. Wheeze. It is continuous, it is high pitched sound, occur predominantly during inspiration are an indication of bronchospasm, during exhalation are an indication of airway secretion. It sounds like hissing or whistling quality. The airway gets larger on inspiration and smaller on exhalation. Heart sounds. Superficial tropographic landmarks assist the therapist in auscultation of heart sounds and murmurs. Left ventricular apex is normally located at the mid-clavicular line at fifth intercostal space where the pulse is most strongly heard. Now we will auscultate heart sounds. There are four areas in which we can hear heart sounds. On second intercostal space, at right sternal border, 
we can hear aortic heart sound. On second intercostal space, at left sternal border, we can hear pulmonic heart sound. On fourth and fifth intercostal space, at left sternal border, we can hear tricuspid heart sound. On fifth intercostal space, at mid clavicular line, we can hear mitral heart sound, where the pulse is most strongly heard. Now we are going to listen aortic heart sound. Then we are going to listen pulmonic heart sound. Then we are going to listen tricuspid heart sound. At last, we listen mitral heart sound. Percussion. Mediate percussion or indirect percussion allows a therapist to assess the density of the underlying organs. Striking a chest wall produces vibration in the underlying structures that in turn give rise to sound, waves or percussion tones. The quality of tone depends on the density of the tissue or organs. These tones are described by the following terms. Resonant, loud or high amplitude, low pitched, longer duration, heard over air filled organs such as the lungs. Dull, low amplitude, medium to high pitched, short duration, heard over solid organs such as the liver. Flat, high pitched, short duration, heard over muscle mass such as the thigh. Tympanic, high pitched, medium duration, heard over hollow structure such as the stomach. Hyper resonant, very low pitched, prolonged duration, heard over tissue with decreased density. Abnormal in adults, heard over lungs with emphysema. Technique, the middle finger of dominant hand is placed firmly on the chest wall in an intercostal space and parallel to the ribs. The top of middle finger of the dominant hand strikes the distal phalanx of the stationary hand with a quick and sharp motion. The impetus of the below comes from the wrist rather than the elbow and has been linked to that of a pedal ball player. As with auscultation, the therapist must follow the sequence of the apex to basis and side to side so that comparison can be made. We do percussion on each and every lobes of the both lungs that are seen in the picture. Then we compare the both sides for abnormalities. We are going to percuss the right middle lobe that, that is located at 4 to 6 intercostal space on the right side of the chest wall. Patient position is left side line. Therapist position stand beside the patient. Technique. The middle finger of the dominant hand is placed firmly on the chest wall and intercostal space and parallel to the ribs. The top of the middle finger of dominant hand strikes on the distal phalanx of the stationary hand with the quick and sharp motion. A movement should be produced by wrist rather than the elbow. A resulting sound at the time of the percussion depends on the density of the tissue or organ.